NBA week is here, and so is a bunch of high-flying volleyball action. A lot of big matchups conclude the 2019 regular season. Woodbury is host to one of them. The 18-3 Woodbury Royals host the 18-7. Fidel St. Margaret's Red Knights, two teams that are dark horses to make it to the state tournament this year. Greetings, everyone. I'm Mike Peden. Once again, all by myself, talking to myself. That's chaos theory. Woodbury, as we noted, a team that's come out of nowhere this year, 18 and three. Last year, they finished around 500. Just two years ago, this Royals program finished 10 games under 500. Benel St. Margaret's presents another tough test for the Royals, and then they'll wrap up Suburban East Conference play with Creighton Durham Hall tomorrow. We noted they are a dark horse in section three. They would have to get through Eastridge and Egan to make it to state. But to reach this point, and hold the second spot in the Suburban East Conference standings is quite remarkable considering where they were just a year ago. Their big hitters up front include Abby Hawks, Brasia Dixon, and Lisey Mixon. Those three hooked up quite nicely in the last game we covered when they went on the road to face Eastridge. Brad English told me he felt the Royals lost a little bit of energy in the later sets and that allowed the Raptors to win that game three sets to one and take first place in the Suburban East Conference standings, likely clinching a conference title in the process. But this Woodbury team, they play tough all year. As we noted, only three losses to Eastridge and a couple of high caliber Wisconsin teams among them River Falls. This will be quite the test for a back-to-back -back starting tonight. Fidel St. Margaret's in a similar situation. They get Woodbury tonight and St. Louis Park tomorrow. The game with St. Louis Park, a Metro West Conference battle that will likely decide Section 6 3A seating. St. Louis Park holds the inside track based on QR app, but Bloomington Jefferson, another team that's been a wonderful surprise, right in the thick of it. They hold the second spot, but El St. Margaret's is ranked third in the QR app score. But for a team that lost a lot of talent, including a Division I prospect a year ago, this Red Knights team, not to be overlooked. Leading the pack is Sarah Lewin. She is the all-around specialist, played mostly center and back row last year. They moved her up to the middle hitter front row spot, and she has done quite nicely. Leads the team in kills, up there in assists and digs. This kid can do it all. And Fawn Lewin, the head coach, told me, you don't get that often in the sport of volleyball. Defensively for the Red Knights, you've got Haley Hewitson who can get a lot of ups. And Demi Mills is another setup option. She was a right side hitter last year for the Buffalo Bison, moved over to the setter position and has done quite well. So this Benilde St. Margaret's team has a lot of versatility at their disposal. We'll be back to kick things off. You're watching High School Volleyball. Across the Twin Cities Metro and beyond, TSB Television offers long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. It takes a lot of time and effort to give you this level of coverage. If you want to help out, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB Television or paypal.me slash TSB Television. Number 12, Claire Lorimar. Number 12. Welcome back to the Lion's Den, home of the Woodbury Royals. Mike Beaton here, all by myself, talking to myself. Okay, I guess Alex is here, so I'm not talking to myself. This is our final week of regular season coverage for fall sports. And this game, a bonus game for all you volleyball fans out there. Wasn't planning on covering a game tonight, but Plans changed, the meeting I was supposed to cover was canceled, so that freed us up for what should be a great non-conference battle. As the lineups are being introduced, let's highlight what we have on tap for you to wrap up our final week of fall sports. Volleyball tonight, Wednesday we go to Eastridge, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel. High school football, Stillwater and Eastridge. The Ponies will try to get to the 500 mark. And Thursday, one more volleyball game. The Bloomington Jefferson Jaguars, one of the surprise teams we talked about in the open. They host the Lakeville North Panthers, one of the perennials. And facing a tough section bracket with Lakeville South and Northfield. All right, let's 
As we noted, these two dark horses, but don't say Margaret so, stands a reasonable chance. Over in section six, this year's winner figures to be an underdog, as I noted in the North St. Paul Simley game. The winner of section one with Northfield and the Lakeville schools in section three. Those will be your most likely state tournament contenders, but Wyzetta out in section five could pose a challenge, and whoever comes out of section six will have something to say. But El St. Margaret's at 18 and seven, Woodbury at 18 and three, the Royals, a tremendous season. Same for the Red Knights. Let's take a look at the starting rotations. For Benilde St. Margaret's, it's Demi Mills, Haley Hewitts in the libero, Lily Eigner, Alexis Brixius, Sarah Lewin, Emily Tholen, and Josie King. Woodbury's rotation, Kayla Town the libero, then you have Abby Hawks, Julia Vang, Jada Nunn, Bree Van Well, Lisey Mixon, and Brasia Dixon. Both teams playing the front end of a back-to-back -to, -back to wrap up the regular season. Benel St. Margaret's will host St. Louis Park. Crosstown rival. And that game could have high implications for section seating. St. Louis Park holds the inside track based on QRF. For Woodbury, it looks like the three seed is locked in with Eastridge effectively going to take the conference title, you would think. But they have Benilde St. Margaret's and Creighton Durham Hall. Creighton Durham Hall, a 500 team, so Woodbury figures to have a 21 season, something that hasn't happened in a long time. Benilde St. Margaret's wearing their pink kits. They recently finished their dig pink invite, so if you're wondering why Benilde St. Margaret's looks a little off color, that's why. And we will start things off with an ace for Demi Mills. So the Red Knights wearing their pink t-shirts going back to their dig pink invite, the tournament they hosted, and a service error. So Mills, one for two, and we're still waiting for our first kill. Both teams have scored a point without having to do a whole lot for it. Now Woodbury on service. That's Tanya Lineski. Brasia Dixon, I should say Lisey Mixon gets the contact and scores the first kill for Woodbury. It was an off-speed hit by Lisey Mixon. Mixon the senior. Bree Van Well had a solid game against Eastridge, game that we had for you a couple weeks ago. Blocked and that falls in play. I believe Sarah Lewin got a piece of it. Sarah Lewin, the daughter of Benilde St. Margaret's head coach, Fong Lewin. And Sarah will head to Emory University next year, the defending Division III champions in volleyball. Setter dump, read by the Red Knights. There's Lewin, she scores off the block. Something tells me we're going to be calling Sarah Lewin's name a lot because of her versatility. Haley Hewitson serving. Leads the team in digs. Which isn't surprising being the libero. And Josie King scores the kill there. Fong Lewin likes Josie King's disruptiveness up front. Good size, good blocking. Haley Hewitson, the senior, her second year as the libero. Yeah. 
Teardrop. Read by Woodbury and throwing down the hammer is Lucy Mixon for her second kill. Mixon rotates back into the service position. Good serve, Hewitson had to backpedal there. And that cut falls out of bounds. Hitting a recharge to Alexis Brixius. Four, four. Josie King makes it 5-4. Josie King, 141 hit percentage, 87 kills. Entering this matchup. And now Sarah Lewin heads back to serve. She has 29 aces on the season. Won't pick up her 30th there. But she's good for a few each game. Hitting error on Brasia Dixon. Sarah Lewin leads the team in kills, second in assists. She can do it all. Blocked, and that will fall in play. Borgelt and Josie King were in there. And Bedell St. Margaret's on a three-point run here that ends with the right arm swing of Abby Hawks. A lot of great volleyball games taking place this week to wrap up the regular season, and there'll be one more tournament over MEA weekend. But we've got Woodbury, Benilde St. Margaret's here. You've got the number one team in Class A, Mayor Lutheran hosting Concordia Academy. Scoring off the block is Josie King. Now we'll see number 14. We'll get her name in a minute. Free ball for the Red Knights. And hitting that into the net was Emma Beerson. Emma Anderson is number 14. Started on the junior varsity roster and then moved to defensive specialist. Service error on Abby Hawks. And that will be enough for Woodbury to call a timeout. They trail 9-6 in the first set. Benilde St. Margaret's making the first push. This Benilde St. Margaret's team, Fong Lewin calls them an overachieving bunch. They lost a lot of talent to graduation and changed their primary rotation five games into the season. The first game with their current rotation. Came in the match against Bloomington Jefferson, which they lost in four sets. Lost a thrilling battle to Southwest Christian in five sets. They were down two sets to none, one sets three and four, and then got obliterated in set five, 15 to two. And Bong Luing told me they just ran out of energy, which can happen sometimes when you're clawing your way back. And then they played a Thursday evening game at the U of M, a game that was rescheduled due to Yom Kippur. So not a game we were able to bring you. But that's all right, we're here for this one. And a hitting error. That will go against Alexis Brixius. So not the best of starts 
for the junior. But she is second on the team in kills, so Alexis Brixius, not to be underestimated. And a service ace drops for Kayla Town. Her first one of the game. So the timeout paying off so far for the Royals. There's Lewin setting up. Blocked by Woodbury. Lewin bats a free ball to Woodbury. Woodbury can't get through the wall. Lewin with the dig. Lewin all over this play. But it's Lisey Mixon who ends it with the point for the Royals and they have scored three in a row to tie it up. That rally will end on a service error. That'll bring us to Emily Tholen. Puts the ball in play. And scoring for the Royals is Abby Lozano. We're tied at 10. Lozano serving there. Sarah Lewin denied. Lewin again. Good read by Town. And Mixon with the finish again. Unofficially four kills in the first set. Brad English, just his first year on varsity, but coached a lot of these Woodbury players at the club level. So a lot of familiarity with this group. Mixon. Goes to the back row where no one is and picks up her fifth kill. And Woodbury with a free ball. Looking to make it three in a row. And they do just that on the point from Bree Van Well. <laughs> the rally ends on another service error. That has been the one sore spot for the Royals so far. Three service errors. Benilde St. Margaret's with just one. Something to keep an eye on as the game progresses. But it's been a neck and neck duel so far. And for Benilde St. Margaret's, that's been the story of their season with a lot of matchups, including Southwest Christian. And Demi Mills, I think we'll get a point for that. Mills, 20 games with 10 assists or more, two with over 20. And she also leads the team among the leaders in digs. Setter dump. Big save by the Red Knights. And that is a hitting error on Mixon. She thought there was a deflection. So that hustle by Benilde St. Margaret's rewards them with a point. Jada Nunn has tried to trick Benilde St. Margaret's with the setter dump on a couple of occasions. Mills serves that into the net. That is her second service error. Now 
Now we'll see Tanya Linuski again, the 5'7 freshman. Lewin, got it. Sarah Lewin, nine games with 10 kills or more. And she also has two games with over 20 assists. Service error on Hewitson. Back and forth this game goes. Neither side is led by more than three. Lewin couldn't quite get under the overpass. But it's still a point for Benil St. Margaret's thanks to Josie King. And now Sarah Lewin goes back to serve. As we noted, 29 aces, Hewitson 27, Demi Mills 23. So a lot of service options for Benil St. Margaret's in regards to scoring plays. And Abby Hawks scores the point for Woodbury. Jada Nunn now serving. Ooh, nearly a collision between Hewitson and Mills. Woodbury though, couldn't get set properly. So a good attacking chance for the Red Knights. And finding a space in the back row is Lexi Borgel, the senior. Her first year as a middle hitter. Borgel, one of three Red Knights with over 100 kills. Blocked, and that will be another point. Orgel and Emma Beerson were there. That serve looked low from the release point, and that will be a service error on Emma Anderson. The fourth service error for BSM. Beerson. I think that will go down as a block. It was tough to tell if it made contact with Brazier Dixon or hit the net. But Dixon was ready to make the play nonetheless. Did that hit the line? Yes, it did. Point for Lexi Borgelt, and it's 18-18. As we noted, neither side is led by more than three. It's been neck and neck. As Alexis Brixius does a quick check on the score. Ambrasia Dixon. Showing off a little hesitation move and it works to perfection. Looked like she was going to jump up and swing for it. Waited just a split second. And now Benel St. Margaret's calls timeout. Their first in the first set. A little nifty move on the part of Brasia Dixon, the six foot sophomore. And this Woodbury team, they're gonna look a little different next year. Mixon, Van Well, Julia Vang, Abby Hawks, all seniors. But Brad English told me when we first covered Woodbury back on October 3rd in their crosstown rival, crosstown battle with Eastridge, this Woodbury team mixes fun and accountability. They have a good time. They really enjoy the progress, the strides they have made this year to at least get in the conversation. And if you were with us for that epic battle with East Ridge, Woodbury did take the first set. The first two sets were close. Woodbury fought off four set points 
and one in an extras, but the third set is where Eastridge turned the tide, and they're able to get the job done from there. But sometimes growth goes through a few blocks, a few bumps. Back to action. Both teams with one timeout left. Lewin with the setter dub. An extended rally brewing here. Up for Lewin. Up for Hawks. Lewin can't save it. Lisey Mixon with kill number six. And Woodbury with a 2018 lead. And as we get closer to 25, even a little separation can go a long way. Woodbury a little stronger on the block, and that's a hitting error on Lexi Borgel. Let's see if Fong Luan will use his second time out. No, he will call for rotation, though. Borgelt will move up front. Demi Mills will take the spot of Emma Beerson. And the Royals lead 21-18, just a few points away from taking the opening frame. The Spinel St. Margaret's team, they're undersized, but Lily Eigner showcasing their grit. They will not give up easily. Hewitson had to die for the dig there. Woodbury with a great attacking chance. But Benilde St. Margaret's is there in the block. Willie Eigner looking to score a couple more points. But it's Woodbury who scores, thanks to Bree Van Well. Her second kill off the block. 22-19. And Fong Luen will use his second time out of set one with the Red Knights trailing 22-19. As he noted, they're an undersized group. They don't have a ton of height among the attackers in comparison to Woodbury, but they've got plenty of experience. Fong Luen in his seventh, co seventh season as head coach. And if you watch Volleyball coverage on CCX Media. You might have seen him make a few appearances as a broadcaster. Recently called the Wyzetta Hill Murray game and was really impressed with the attacking ability and the height of Wyzetta's lineup. He feels they'll be the favorite to get out of Section 5, which is also the section where Champlin Park, the defending champions, reside. Egan's going to be a tough out as well with their roster that includes Kennedy Orr, who took part in some USA volleyball commitments. And as we noted, the Lakeville schools, North and South, Northfield, a lot of good volleyball. And some good volleyball here. Net ball is won by Woodbury on the double contact call. Woodbury two away from taking set one. Lisey Mixon with authority. And the Royals have five set points to work with. It was neck and neck until Woodbury went on a run. And Lisey Mixon playing a big part of it. Seven kills. And I'm sure she'll add some more as the game moves along. Woodbury looking to close out. Lewin. Can get it there. 
Lisi Mixon will get the finish. An off-speed hit. Benilde St. Margaret's couldn't catch up to it in time. And the Royals use a late first set surge to take the opening frame, 25 to 19. Lisi Mixon putting a stamp on that first set. Eight kills unofficially. That's a lot of points. Across the Twin Cities Metro and beyond, TSB Television offers long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. It takes a lot of time and effort to give you this level of coverage. If you want to help out, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB Television or paypal.me slash TSB Television. We had a little bit of confusion regarding the set intermission, but we got it sorted out. It is still three minutes, in case you're wondering. And I'm still Mike Beaton, all by myself, talking to myself. Well, except for Alex, who's right next to me. Woodbury winning the opening frame 25-19 over Benilde St. Margaret's. Lisi Mixon leading the way with eight kills for the Royals. Benilde St. Margaret's struggled to get some momentum. Sarah Lewin held just two kills. And when it comes to the height factor, Woodbury looks like they have the edge. So Benilde St. Margaret's might have to get a little more crafty on the attacks. It was close up until 18-18. Woodbury closed out the first set on a 7-1 run in a battle of 3A schools. In a couple of years, this will likely be a battle of 4A and 3A with volleyball adding a fourth class in 2021. Here's Sarah Lewin, and she's rejected. Lisi Mixon up front doing a lot of damage. And she's only 5'9". Good serve by Woodbury. Hewitson has to bat a free ball. Excellent attacking chance for Mixon, but she overshoots the target. That's just her second error, though. Eight kills, one error by my count. And going off speed. I believe that was Abby Hawks. And the points are piling up early for the Royals. And who else would it be? Lisey Mixon. She's feeling it. She can't be stopped. Josie King scores for the Red Knights. And that will be a double contact call. Sarah Lewin serving for the Red Knights. We are even at three, not anymore. Lewin with her first ace of the game. Another good serve by Lewin, but Woodbury recovers. Lewin trying to set up, and she'll get the assist. Alexis Brixius will get the kill, her first of the game. And so the Red Knights making a move with Sarah Lewin serving.
Ox going off speed. Brixius picks it up. And that will be a hitting error on Borgel. Her second. The serve received goes over the net and an easy tap down for Abby Hawks. Tied at five as Jada Nunn heads back to the service position. Brixius couldn't put enough on it, hits that one into the net. For her third air. And the service error on none ends the rally for Woodbury for now. Brixius from the left side. Contact with the net. And Brazia Dixon hits that one into the net. Jada Nunn's pass, though, not a lot of height on it. So a lack lackluster pass and an unfortunate hitting error on the part of Dixon. Much better pass by Nunn that time, but a free ball for the Red Knights. Net ball, and that will be won by Woodbury. It doesn't have to be a hard hit, just has to go over the net. And Abby Lozano taps it over. Lisi Mixon not in the rotation as of now, so a key opportunity here for the Red Knights to try to build an advantage with her waiting to get back in. And Alexis Brixius. Picks up kill number three and officially in this second set. It's 8-7 though. And again for the Red Knights. Going on a run is crucial. At least with Mixon on the bench and that's not going to help. Because here she comes following the service error. Five nine, but in that first set played a lot bigger than that. Another off speed hit for Lozano. So Abby, she hasn't picked up a lot of points yet, but she's been doing it with the finesse move and it's nine nine. Lewin with the assist, Borgelt with the kill, and Borgelt doesn't have the velocity that Mixon does or some other players, but found a spot and surveying the field can go a long way. Here's Mixon batting it over, but it was read by the Red Knights. They'll try again, and this time Lisi Mixon throws it down. She cannot be stopped. Oh, 
Abby Lozano to put it in play. And that is a double contact call on a fine serve by Abby Lozano. That might have scored a one on server rating. Lewin from behind the 10 foot line. Van Well, and it was upped by number 11, Claire Lorimore. Mixon, teardrop, gets it to land. And Lisey Mixon, already at double digits for kills with 10. One of the marquee figures who's gonna be around for a while. On the college circuit, perhaps. This is her last season of high school ball. Bree Van Well lines it up from the left side. 13 10. Von Lewin speaking with his daughter and trying to keep an ill St. Margaret's. Keep them organized. Here's Mixon. This time BSM reads her off-speed hit. Sarah Lewin going with a setter dump. It's a play she likes to run, hasn't really displayed it so far in this game. But Lewin converted from a setter to a middle hitter, as we mentioned in the open. And having that setter's mentality as an attacker helps her understand what hitters need and gives her a high floor awareness that a lot of other attackers lack. But someone with plenty of awareness is Lisey Mixon. Benil St. Margaret's has yet to find an answer for number 11, the 5'9 senior. Benil St. Margaret's thought that serve was going out. Instead, it's a service ace. And a timeout for Benilde St. Margaret's. Fifteen to eleven, the score in set two. And a reminder that we have a couple more games coming your way. If you're watching this on YouTube, before we wrap up our fall sports coverage, Stillwater Eastridge football on Wednesday. It will be cool, but sunny and no threat of snow or rain. And Thursday, Lakeville North pays a visit to Bloomington Jefferson for high school volleyball. That one should be a lot of fun. So Tanya Lenuski getting the ace for Woodbury. And Lewin gets it to fall on the Woodbury side. If Sarah Lewin can get her hitting going, she has just four kills unofficially, that could be a big step forward. For Benilde St. Margaret's. Yeah. 
And that's a point for Woodbury on the double contact violation that was set up by another off-speed hit from Lisey Mixon. No matter where she is on the floor, she is giving Benilde St. Margaret's fits. And Woodbury has been using that to full effect. An overpass on the serve receive. And Woodbury will get a free ball. And Brasia Dixon will get a kill out of it. Woodbury extending their lead, 17-12. Dixon got the block on Lewin that time. Mixon with the up. Dixon hit it out of bounds. That is her third error. Lewin serving now. Has an ace already. Abby Hawks misfires. So Benilde St. Margaret's picking up a couple of points on miscues. Hawks with the running lob. And an up by Lenuski. Overpass. Woodbury does not score. It's tough to tell from here. I think Borgelt was able to make contact, get it to fall on the Woodbury side. So the Red Knights scoring the last three. Dixon. That looked like a shovel pass from Jada Nunn, and Dixon just bats it over with the right arm. But it's good enough to get the kill. Another assist for Lewin, and another kill for Alexis Brixius. Brixius with five games in double digits in the kill category. She had a season high 19 in the Metro West Conference win over Chanhassen. A four set victory over the Storm. Hawks will score. And that's kill number five for number five. Hawks rotates back to the service position. And got Lewin to backtrack, so a free ball for the Royals. But the reception for Dixon led Jada Nunn too close to the net. She makes contact with it and a free point for the Red Knights. Now it's Alexis Brixius' turn to serve. Bree Van Well charges, ends up going off speed. Lily Eigner misses the target. Her first error. Kayla Town serve for the Low serve, and that will be an ace for Kayla Town. Her second. Fox in the next for Vanilla.
21-17. Woodbury with a couple of cracks at it, and Bree Van Well finishes the play. Timeout, Benilde St. Margaret's. Their last of the second set, Woodbury well on their way to going up two sets to none. In a game that does carry some implications. Again, both schools are 3A schools. That'll change in a couple of years, which should level the playing field a little more with Benilde St. Margaret's having a much smaller enrollment compared to you know, Hopkins or Jefferson, Edina, St. Louis Park. So that should make the sections a little more equal, but we've got to wait a couple of years before we expand to four classes. And this time Woodbury getting production all around. Just three kills from Lisey Mixon, but they also picked up three from Abby Hawks. Brazier Dixon, Bree Van Well have come up clutch on a couple of plays, so Woodbury finding a lot of ways to score. <laughs> Royals three away from a set two win, and that will be a point as the attack from Benilde St. Margaret's did not cross the net. So Mixon doesn't have to worry about the block. And Woodbury. At least the first couple of sets. Seem to emerge. Coming up with a few more plays like that, Lisey Mixon. Tier drops her fourth kill of the set, her 12th unofficially. And so far, that just seems to be the difference. Woodbury a little stronger on the attack. They have a little more height at their disposal and they've been using it to eke out enough of a distance, enough of a cushion over Benilde St. Margaret's to pull away in the later stages. Tap down by number 16, Chelsea Fox, the junior. And as we noted earlier, Benilde St. Margaret's, they've worked their way out of deficits before. Southwest Christian came back from two sets down to force a fifth one. They'll be facing a similar situation here as Bree Van Well Scores on Woodbury's second set point opportunity. 25-18 is the final in set number two. And the Royals, as we noted, seem to be the stronger team in the later stages of a set. And that has been the difference between two well-played, well-coached, and well-organized teams. We'll come back to see if Woodbury can take it in straight sets or if Benilde St. Margaret's has a run in them. You're watching High School Volleyball. Across the Twin Cities Metro and beyond, TSB Television offers long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. It takes a lot of time and effort to give you this level of coverage. If you want to help out, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB Television or paypal.me slash TSB Television. We were waiting for the Benilde St. Margaret's team to come back after we had a set to intermission where spectators tried their hardest to knock a ball into a trash can. Quite an amusing set two activity. First one went in and then there was a volleyball that went off a guy's head. 
Seems like a dangerous activity. So Benilde St. Margaret's trying to rally their own. And Sarah Lewin, her lack of production in this game is noteworthy. Just four kills unofficially. And this is an athlete, as we said, going to Division Three Emory, the current number one team in NCAA D3 and the defending D3 champions. She had 24 kills, 23 assists, and a win over Chanhassen. 13 kills, 23 assists against Mount West Tonka. 14 kills, 21 assists against Southwest Christian. So the fact that she hasn't able to register on the kill column is noteworthy. When you look at her production this season, leads the team in hitting percentage at 349. Second on the team in digs, second in assists. It will be Demi Mills who leads the team in assists to try to rally Benilde St. Margaret's here. But Lisi Mixon is someone they have not found an answer for. Mia Hani making her first appearance. 5-6 outside hitter. Woodbury up two sets to none. And even though Lewing isn't racking up kills, she is certainly racking up assists. Chelsea Fox will get the point there. Her second assist. Haley Hewitson serves it into the net. That is her second service error. Which brings us back to the dangerous Lisi Mixon. And she picks up her second service ace. And I'd love to tell you in more detail the prolific abilities of Lisi Mixon, but most teams don't post stats. But she is leaving her mark in this one. Josie King says right back at you. As we noted, in the early stages of a set, Benilde St. Margaret's can hang with Woodbury. It's when you get to the later stages that they've struggled. Now Braza Dixon joins the fun. Benilde St. Margaret's, they've done well in conference. They did lose to Chaska in straight sets. B. Chan Hassan swept Cooper, swept Kennedy. Lost to Jefferson in four. King fires. Dug by the Royals, Hawks, blocks. None was there for the recovery, and no one was there. Dixon thought someone else was going to set her up. And none made the bump play so she couldn't touch it again. No one else from Woodbury called it out, and that's a free point for the Red Knights. Unusual, but we play on. It's 4-3. Now it's 5-3 following the BSM error. Courtney Cahill, a let service ace. Two in a row. Courtney Cahill, the six foot setter, not too many setters at six feet. Your setters, your specialists are not always that tall and it helps to have height. 
as Fawn Lewin mentioned to me before. Benilde St. Margaret's doesn't have a ton of it. But they put together a solid campaign, and whatever happens, they'll need a short-term memory as Woodbury scores again, thanks to Bree Van Well. And this 8-3 advantage on the part of Woodbury is going to lead to a timeout for Fawn Lewin. Woodbury won their first 14 matches before losing. Then went through a stretch where they lost three of five. Two of those losses were in tournament play to Eau Claire North and River Falls, two high-powered Wisconsin teams. They lost in four sets to East Ridge. Since then, they swept Park of Cottage Grove and White Bear Lake. And as we noted, they have a game with Creighton Durham Hall tomorrow. The Raiders, not really a contender in section three, but Woodbury doesn't want to drop it. Again, the three seed they have pretty much locked in, but a loss to Creighton Durham Hall would really pose trouble. But this Royals team, as we noted, a 14 and 0 start. And that included nine straight, nine consecutive straight set wins. You may have also seen a new floor. Last time we were here was for a basketball game. It was before they refitted the gym. It looks a lot more in line with the brand. They will give that to Dixon and Van Well on the block. And they are definitely representing the Woodbury brand. Floor was repainted. The bleachers got an update. So that drab brown no longer in use at Woodbury. and didn't really fit with the school's color scheme. Alexis Brixius trying to get in where you fit in for Benel St. Margaret's. They were chilling 9-3 early. Now it's 9-4 as BSM tries to rally back. Van Well. That is her first hitting error. Dixon down the middle. Got it. And Woodbury building up a 10-5 advantage without Lisey Mixon. And look who returns the rotation. That combination of Dixon and Mixon. It's given a lot of teams fits this year. Do the Red Knights have an answer? There's Emily Tholen serving. None to Mixon. Tholen with the dig. Lewin, big up by Kayla Town. Lewin will get another try. She goes off speed. None reads it. Woodbury, they've studied up on Lewin well, but that will be a hitting error. Hawks hit that out of bounds, it looked like. And Dolan hits that out of bounds. Seven service errors for Benel St. Margaret's, three for Woodbury. And those points add up. Make it 7-4, although Woodbury still has the edge there. Benilde St. Margaret's trying to rally from what was a six-point deficit. They trail 9-3, it's currently 11-8. Demi Mills.
score the point there. They'll take it, Demi Mills. Two games with 20 assists or more, including 29 against Chanhassen. I'm, that's pretty impressive. Of course, you had four sets to do it. And now Benel St. Margaret's is feeling pumped. Josie King declines Woodbury's invitation. Or well, I should say she rejected Woodbury's invitation. Either way, it's a one point margin. Julia Vang misplayed the serve receive, it looked like, so a good attacking chance here for the Red Knights. King blocked, gets her own miss, and Sarah Lewin, a heads up play. And that ties it up at 11. Timeout Woodbury. Sarah Lewin, her father, had a lot to say about the senior. The setter's mentality, understanding what they need, a high floor awareness. Fong considers Sarah the team's most consistent athlete. Also a good vertical, and you saw that awareness come to play on that last point. She's been limited in her production on the kill category, just five, even though she has a considerable lead. And speaking of her all-around versatility, nine games with 10 kills or more, 16 games with 10 assists or more, and four games with 10 digs or more. And on the flip side, Haley Hewitson leads the team in digs, has 10 games with double digits, two with over 20, and three games with zero. Now it makes you wonder if they forgot to put them in or if she just wasn't able to make any plays defensively. But again, Hewitson not the only option. Lewin and Mills equally prolific. And that's the third service error on Demi Mills. Mills transferred from Buffalo. She played right hitter there, moved to center. And Woodbury coughs up a point on the service error of their own for Mia Hodney. So Demi Mills comes over with a lot of talent and she'll have a couple more years, one more year I should say. Haley Hewitson, we're trading service errors here. Hewitson, a former setter, before moving to Libero. So a lot of moving pieces on this Benilde St. Margaret's team. That is the first hitting error on Josie King and Benilde St. Margaret's. They can't afford too many of these miscues, trailing two sets to none, especially with Lisey Mixon giving them fits early on. Back row attack. Hewitson will get the assist. Brixius with the kill. Hewitson had 29 assists, so she'll chip them in here and there. But she is a former setter. Dixon with a heavy hit, and Benilde St. Margaret's can't save it. Hewitson likes to use the dump on the part of Benilde St. Margaret's, although she hasn't had too many opportunities to do so here. None, good serve. Hewitson has to bat a free ball over. Sarah Lewin called it out, and indeed it is. So a hitting error on Raja Dixon, her fourth. Fifteen, fourteen. Red Knights came back from six down. It helped that it was nine three, giving them plenty of room to catch up. 
Brixius got it off of town. And the Red Knights will get a free ball to work with here. Not the best pass, though, on the part of Lewin. Nobody was up front, and Brazier Dixon knocks that down. Lewin to Brixius for the point. With Alexis Brixius, who's going back to the service position, Von Lewin told me she has really picked things up over the last 10 or so games. A very coachable athlete, and when they got her to reinforce urgency in her approach, that's when Fong noted, noticed a stronger attacking presence from number nine. And Lexi Borgelt picks up her first kill of set three, and we're tied at 16. So a slow start, strong finish for Alexis Brixius, the junior. And so even though Benilde St. Margaret's will graduate a lot more talent, including the team's top attacker and seemingly do everything, and Sarah Lewin. There'll be a lot of leadership coming back. Sarah, as we noted, heading to Emory, which is located in Atlanta, and a double contact call on Sarah Lewin. Wasn't quite in the position she wanted for the set. And as a result, Another point for Woodbury. Borkel gets one back. And it's neck and neck again. Now keep an eye on these next few points because this is usually the stage of the set where Woodbury makes their run. Good serve by Tholen. That will set up the Red Knights. Woodbury answers back on the block. Dolan with the up. And Woodbury able to save it, but another free ball for the Red Knights. Mills will set up for Lewin again. She goes off speed, none. Made contact, but Woodbury could not save it. Sarah Lewin. Hustling no matter where she is. Dolan continuing to serve. I'll say this, it's a lot easier to call Benilde St. Margaret's because with those pink t-shirts taking the place of their standard jerseys, all their names are on the back. Bree Van Well has a fitting name when it comes to volleyball. Her seventh kill. Now we haven't heard anything out of Lisey Mixon as far as the kills are concerned. Can she put a series of plays together? She was lights out in that first set. That ball bounced off the backboard. Falls in the field of play. As you know, if it goes off the ceiling, it's still a playable ball. And Sarah Lewin knows what to do with playable balls. Nineteen nineteen. Lewin with her seventh kill. There's Lisey Mixon. Found no woman's land on the back corner. 20 to 19. Both teams with one timeout remaining in this third set. Woodbury got the block, so Benilde St. Margaret's able to reset. 
That was an off-speed hit. Hewitson with a couple of defensive plays and a near collision as they tried to send it over. Hewitson again, played the net. Everyone's going all over. And that's gonna be Benelte St. Margaret's point as Jada Nunn fell and crossed the center line. And it looked like Woodbury had Benelte St. Margaret's on the ropes. A crucial sequence there, Jada Nunn went over the center line. They'll let the substitution take place, allowing Alexis Brixius to take her spot in the front row. That was a big point. And that will be four touches as Abby Hawks did not get that across the net. Benilde St. Margaret's leading 21-20. And a good serve by Hewitson will set up another excellent attacking opportunity. That goes right to Brad English, but he is not an eligible player. He will use his second timeout of the set. And Sarah Lewin, who had been relatively quiet in sets one and two, Showcasing more of her ability here. She has four kills. In set three, and unofficially a total of eight. And a reminder, if you're watching this on YouTube, on Wednesday we've got high school football. Stillwater and Eastridge as the Ponies look to Finished the regular season four and four after picking up a surprise win over Creighton Durham Hall seven to five. And on Thursday, we head to Bloomington Jefferson to see the Jaguars as they take on the Lakeville North Panthers. That should be a fun way to close out the regular season. Then we'll take a few weeks off and come back for basketball. Haley Hewitson. As we noted, the former setter, a lot of high caliber athletes. In fact, the senior class, according to Fon Lewin, the winningest since his time as a coach here. That went in off the line, Judge, but it does go in for Abby Hawks, who had not been heard from offensively until there. 22-21, Woodbury out of timeouts. Benilde St. Margaret still has one left. Brixius misfires. Her fifth error. Well, she was quiet in the first set, has picked it up since then, but Woodbury scoring two points in succession to tie it up. These next few points are critical. Good serve by Mixon. Hewitson has to bat a free ball over. Dixon. Got the deflection. It looked like Benilde St. Margaret's made a play for it. And Fon Lewin will call a timeout. Looked a little perplexed there on the call. From up here, it looked like one of the Benilde St. Margaret's players made a play for it. And so Woodbury sits two away from wrapping this up in straight sets. But again, this just speaks to the competitive ability of Benilde St. Margaret's where even if they get swept or if they don't always close out, they are always in contention. And Woodbury, if they're able to close this out, it would just be another <laughs> benchmark to a tremendous season, whatever happens to them in sections. You know, that 14 game winning streak includes, well, victory over Stillwater, although the Ponies have tapered off since their glory years of a couple where they won back-to-back -back section titles, straight set one over Grand Rapids. They beat Roseville in five sets. Roseville never an easy out. 
And they swept North St. Paul at their own tournament. Just a two-set match, but this team, they're not a pushover. But North St. Margaret's gets a free ball. Can they take advantage? Woodbury gets the block. Hawks goes off speed. Mills with the up. Brixius will attack. Julia Vang reads it. Dixon tried to find a spot in the back row, could not. Extended rally here. Dolan with another up. King, a high lob. Perfect opportunity for Dixon. You bet. Match point for Woodbury. They'll have two chances. As we said, neck and neck, but Woodbury able to emerge in the closing stages. Hawks. Can't get the finish there. Josie King got the block to fall in bounds. Sarah Lewin to serve. Middle St. Margaret's needs this one to extend the set. Dixon will close it out. Raja Dixon stepping up in set three with five kills, eight unofficially. No points from Lisey Mixon, but she did her damage early and often in the first set. She gets 12 and Woodbury with a straight set win. It was not an easy one though. 25-19, 25-18, 25-23. And with that, Woodbury goes to 19 and three. Benilde St. Margaret's falls to 18 and eight. And for the Royals, this very likely locks them in the three seed. They pretty much had that spot already. And Benilde St. Margaret's, they'll have a day to regroup before they take on St. Louis Park tomorrow, what should be another fun volleyball match and one that could have significant sway in the Section 6 bracket. But it's Woodbury who wins the day here to kick off the NBA week with a straight set win over a gritty Benilde St. Margaret's team. We'll come back and get a word with a Woodbury player or two before we wrap things up. This is High School Girls Volleyball. Across the Twin Cities Metro and beyond, TSB Television offers long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. It takes a lot of time and effort to give you this level of coverage. If you want to help out, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB Television or paypal.me slash TSB Television. And I'm joined by the duo known as Mixon and Dixon, uh, Lisey Mixon and Brasia Dixon. Uh, Two players who came up big as the game moved along. Lisi, we'll start with you. You had eight kills unofficially in the first set. You finished with 12 overall and gave Benilde St. Margaret's fits early. How are you able to find spaces to attack? Um, I think it's just about giving yourself time when you're approaching to be able to see the court and see the ball and work around their defense and find out where their weak spots are. What does it mean to be a part of this journey? You're 19 and three now. Just two years ago, this Woodbury team finished 10 games under 500. What do you make of this turnaround? Um, I think it's really awesome to like come into this new year with a new coach, um, a lot of our team being new to the varsity level, and being able to compete at a high level constantly, consistently, and, all, and have really good team chemistry. Um, and I think like having new players come in and all of us being friends off the court helps with that a lot, too. Brasia, you... Uh we're pretty good on the blocks there, and then in the third set, uh, you got five kills, including the one to clinch it. But don't St. Margaret, so they held with you every set in this one, but in the later stages, it seemed like Woodbury had just enough to pull away. What was the difference? The difference is just, you just gotta do it. You just gotta go for it. I mean, there's risks that you have to take, and there's times you're like, ooh, can I really do this? Can I really not? But you just gotta do it, yeah. And what would you make of this season, 19-3? and three. Uh, Last year you finished right at 500, as I noted two years ago. You were one of the uh, bottom feeders in the Suburban East, and now uh, here you are. You know, who knows what will happen in sections, but uh, you beat Creighton-Durham Hall. You're going to get to 20 wins. 
Um, I'm honestly new to this school, so I don't know how it was in previous years, but that does not matter because right now we're on a win streak and we're just balling. We're good. Yeah. yeah. So no baggage, no way. You could just go in there and play. Where did you come from originally? I went to Highland Park um, in St. Paul, so yeah. Okay, so a St. Paul kid uh, doing things out here. And what would you make of, uh, I guess, your new teammates and... What does it mean, even if you weren't familiar with the history, to be a part of uh, this up-and-coming Royals program now? I'm honestly having a really good time. It's fun. It's fun to win, and it's like fun to lose, and that's the most important part. As long as you can have fun losing, you can have fun winning. I'm glad you brought that up. The Not that losing is fun, per se, but your coach noted that this team loves to mix fun and accountability when he came in. You know, as you noted, his first year, although he coached a lot of you guys in club, and so bringing that attitude and uh, you know, having fun but playing hard, how do you think that's helped this Woodbury team succeed the way they have? Um, well, our coach has a motto, we practice how we play. So in practice, we definitely want to hold each other accountable. Like, hey, we need to, even if we are going to have fun, we still know we're here to practice. We're here to work on the skills that we need to work on while also building our team chemistry and our bond between us. So I feel like with us practicing that way on the court, there's really no difference. And, you know, we're able to have fun, but no, when we need to get serious, we can buckle down and make stuff happen. Honestly... We work hard in practice, and that really shows on the court. And like, if you guys like film our practices, it would make a lot of sense on how like well we play, especially in that, that this past game. So yeah. Well, this game, Eastridge. I mean, all season long, really, uh, 14 wins to start the year. I think it's showing, and uh, I think a big reason this Woodbury program has been able to turn around at the magnitude they have. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh, oh, I don't know. It put me on the spot there. Um, <laughs> My mom, my dad, um, I don't know, Raisha. <laughs> um, I just want to say hi to my old friends at my old school and my mom, and especially the Benilde St. Margaret coaches, because all of them have coached me and have taught me what I've showed on the court today. So I think that's really important. So just hi to everyone who brought me here into this journey. I take it you two don't see the, watch The Price is Right a lot. I have that's actually. Okay. I have. <laughs> well, that's where I stole it from. Drew Carey, when they spin the big wheel, he does the same thing, so... That's yeah. So I stole it from him. Watch a couple episodes, and you'll and you'll be ready next time I talk to you. <laughs> and uh, Lisi, I know you, this is your senior year. What are your plans after this? Um, I am looking to play in college. I have not made my final decision yet, but um, I am hoping to soon. I just have to talk with my family and see what we think is best for me and my future. Well, I'm sure Brasia can put in a word for you, your coaches, and everyone else here at Woodbury. Once again, congrats on the win, and we'll see if you can make it 20 with Creighton Durham Hall, but uh, whatever happens, it's been a great uh, journey, and I'm glad you two are able to reap the benefits of playing hard, playing fun, and just doing what you do. Thank you. Thank you. That's Lisey Mixon and Brasia Dixon, and that wraps up our coverage here from the Lions Den in Woodbury. For the rest of our crew, I'm Mike Beaton. Thanks for watching High School Volleyball.